Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to be having a look at the cast bar animation UI slash just a cast bar in general. Uh, you can see it here on the screen as I'm talking. It's going to be something, it's, a, it's a, a quite a big script that has five different overload in which you can start a cast, either by specifying just a time, so just to see a progress bar for some example. Uh, you can also specify the text within it, what you want it to write. You can specify the width of the cast bar, so how long you'd like to see it. Um, what else? Animation in and animation out. So you can have custom animation that makes it so it fades in, fades out, and it can also shrink with the size. So all of that is possible because I woke up on Sunday morning and decided to go a little bit beyond what I usually do and, and create a very long cast bar. So I'd like to take you through that process, uh, the process I took to create that cast bar, and that's going to be in the second part of the video. However, if you'd like to just grab it and use it in your game, uh, you can also do that. So if you are to do that and not give me the watch time for the uh, this video, I would like you to please leave a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel if you are not already because more content like this and also more free stuff is coming your way. So make sure you do that. I would greatly appreciate it. And before we get started, one more thing. I'd like to say thank you once again to everybody who did leave a review on Udemy because my rating is now 4.8 something, I think 4.84. It varies basically. Um, and I'm really grateful for that because that's going to help me quite a lot in the uh, Udemy SEO. So once again, really thankful for that. People seem to be enjoying the course as well. So that's that's win-win. Okay, I think we're good. Let's get started. All right, so as mentioned, you'll be able to find this for free on GitLab. GitLab.com, my name and then motor controller project. Um, the link will be in the description below as well. So you can do that if you wish. Going under the project files, I'm going to show you where they are. They are under assets. Um, there is one for prefab, UI, and then here you'll find the cast bar prefab. If you go back just for the scripts, they are under scripts, cast bar, and here they are. So just the cast bar is over here, and the example script is right here. That's all you need to know. And um, as I mentioned, if you're getting this and then you, you plan on getting out of the video, then please just give me a subscribe or a like. I would really appreciate that, and I will see you in the example. Cheers. And I'll show you exactly what we have to do to, to make this. Um, it is quite a heavy script, however. It didn't need to be that heavy, but I wanted to give as many functionality as, um, as I had in mind back then. So this component is split in three different aspects. One, we have the cast bar UI, which is a prefab. We also have the cast bar script, which controls pretty much everything uh, regarding to the UI. And it also has the events. So the on cast start, complete and cancel. And finally, the fireball caster. So uh, this could be really anything. Um, this is what you're going to have to configure to your game, actually. So to get started, I'd like to start with the piece of UI and also um, its script. It doesn't sit, the script doesn't sit on top of the cast bar for the sole purpose that I don't want this to exist unless we need it. So what really happens in my configuration is that um, the cast bar is deleted and the script is on top of my motor could be on top of my first person, could be on top of any other caster, but only if I want to see what the person is casting. So that being said, I've added the cast bar again so we can have a look at it. It's a simple image component. So here is what the piece of UI look like. If I check in Photoshop, this is the image right here. It's a square, but of course we use the, um, the tiling technique we've learned last week. So if you don't know that, check out last week's video. Um, we use that technique to make it scalable, which means um, I can modify the width and it's not going to impact the quality of the sprite. So that being said, we have this, we have a slice image. We also have a mask on top of it because else, um, if I didn't have a mask, as you can see here, the cast bar label, so the text on top of it, um, gets, gets outside of the bar. So it's really up to you here. So I have a mask for that reason. And then inside of it, I do have a fill. So it's a, a sprite that has nothing on it. So it's none. And then as you can see here, all I do through code is modify the scale. Now it's very important that when you do that, uh, the anchor is actually on the left side. So as you can see here, my pivot point is on zero X and also the center in Y, which means um, when I do scale him down, it scales down in such fashion. On top of that, I have a color. This color could be set through code as well. Um, the configuration was not done in this 
version here, but it could definitely be done in the future if it's something required. Not a big change here. We do have a reference to that in the script. And finally, on top of that, I have a label, which just says uh, whatever you, you want it to say, really. So it's going to be something you can configure. Um, you saw in the example, it said fireball. So that being said, that's the piece of UI. Now, the real, <laughs> the real piece of work is actually the script behind it. So as mentioned in the intro, you can find this script in my GitLab. Um, you can find it directly in my motor controller project. It's something you can just grab, or if you wish to recreate it, I do encourage you to do that. If you do grab it, however, please uh, just give me a subscribe. It's free, and that's all I'm asking for. Okay, so looking at this script here, we start with config. Those are the only four fields you will need to config. What is the default width, which you can change when you call your spell? Uh, what's the default height of your bar? What is the prefab, which means what are you spawning exactly? And where are you spawning it? Now, this one doesn't need to be configured because we are just, um, if you don't have anything, we're going to be looking for a canvas, any canvas really. So uh, that's something you can avoid setting. And what else? Uh, we have three action. So we can hook ourselves to these action. We can know when it start, when it's complete, and when it's cancel. There is an example on how to do that in the fireball uh, script. And the rest here is just for logic. So we have a bunch of things here, such as uh, default animation and default animation out. Uh, canvas group because we changed the opacity, so the alpha, and the rest is just it's just logic really. So we start by uh, making sure we have the visual, so we create the visual. We also turn it off afterwards, we hide it. Um, the reason we do that is simply because we just need to, to uh, create it at first, get some reference to pretty much everything, so canvas group, the fill, transform, uh, the text, the label, all of that. So this is just a, we initialize things. And then after that, um, the bunch of it here is this function, which we have five overload for. You can start a cast with nothing in it. So we can just start a cast bar with no text inside of it uh, for a certain amount of time. So that's possible. You can start it with a time and also with a label. So a two second fireball, for example. You can set it with a custom width. So the bar could be bigger if you wish. You can start a cast with a specified animation and the same thing here with specified animation plus width. So um, all of these are really just overload for the same function, which is this one. When we do cast, we first check, are we allowed to cast? And right now, um, there is nothing stopping us from casting, but it's something you could implement in your in your own logic. So you can check, hey, am I in the air? Am I not able to jump, uh, sorry, cast while I'm moving? That's where you would put your own logic. And then going uh, further here, we start by showing the cast bar. We, we call the event for the on cast bar start. And then we do show animate in, which we'll get at in a second. Change the size, reset the fill bar, uh, put a cast time in there, a initial cast time, and we write the label. If we make it through the whole cast, so in the update statement, you'll be able to see Are we guessing? Yes. So if we are casting and we made it through the whole cast, so the ratio is above one, then we call complete cast. At which time we hide with the animation that was uh, defaulted. So for the example here, the animation by default, I believe is, is none. So that's instant. We hide instantly the complete cast if we haven't specified any animation. Set is casting to false. And then we finally call the oncast complete dot invoke, which is the most important part because when you follow this up with actual logic behind the spell, um, the logic will be hooked to this event here. We also have a function for canceling the cast, which we don't use right now, but um, it could be could be useful. It exists and it works. And then the big part is right here in the show and hide function. We start by um, stopping all coroutine because some of the animation actually both of the animation that is not the instant one, they do use coroutine, so we want to make sure we stop all the coroutine on top of this behavior. Uh, don't mistake this for stopping all the coroutine in your game, just on top of this behavior. And if we don't have any cast bar animation, we just directly um, put these value on and we, we set active to true. So this is just going to show the ball instantly. And then after that, if we decide to do a opacity or a size, and actually those are uh, bit flags, so it, the, the statements mean you can have both. We start a coroutine for both opacity animation and also size animation. 
Same thing here for the height, so I'm going to skip it. It's just the other way around, really. Um, and when we do the animation, instead of sending in uh, through for animate in, we send in false for animate out. The logic goes as follow. When we do a animation in, we just do a coroutine that for every second, we change the alpha group, uh, sorry, the alpha property from zero to one. And the other way around is from one to zero. That's for the opacity. And same thing here for the animation, but instead of changing the dot alpha, we change the size delta. So this fireball caster could be really a caster with anything, could be a genetic script that's cast all your spell really. Um, but we're gonna have a look at it because it's quite quite a simple one. When this one comes alive, so on the start, um, we enable, basically this is just like a start, but uh, it's enabled so I can call on the symbol as well. Um, we register to all this all the events that there is and uh, we have function for all of them which we don't use because there's really no logic in there just yet um, but when this fireball caster uh, gets to know that um, he start casting we have a function for that we have a function for completed cast and also when it is being cancelled and now how we trigger a cast is just like this cast bar dot start cast and then you use one of the many many different overload that we have. So let's have a look. Uh, we're gonna be modifying this around so we can have a better idea on what happens. So key code, let me do, I'll do all the number here at the top of my keyboard. So alpha one, we can do the same thing for alpha two, three and four and five. So let's look at variation of this, um, what we can actually do. So fireball could be a frost bolt instead. It could be taking less time to cast, so 0 0.5 second. We could say, I don't want to have any animation when I enter on this spell, so I want the cast bar to be there instantly, especially because it's a, it's a very, very fast cast, so technically you don't, you don't want to see the delay there. Um, and when it fades away, I'll just want the opacity. Uh, what else could we cast? Use item. That's going to take three seconds. We could do opacity and opacity out. We could do something a little bit more simple. So just like, I don't know, a wait. <laughs> a wait for three seconds with no animation whatsoever. And we can just have a empty bar as well for maybe five seconds here. And that's all we have to do. So we have multiple options that we could use. One, two, three, four, and five in this case. Let's have a look in the game what they look like. And I'm gonna make sure I remove the cast ball because we don't wanna see it there by default. We want um, we want it to be spawned. So as you can see here, it exists as a prefab. So I'm gonna press on the one. That's my fireball from earlier. Press on two, that's my frost bolt. As you can see, it, it spawned instantly. So the animation, um, there wasn't any opacity fade in. It was just right there from the get go. Three is use item. I forgot what this one was. I think it's opacity in and opacity out. Yeah, opacity in, opacity out. Number four is just wait. Instantly appears in the screen and also instantly disappear. And finally five is just a couple of seconds there with no text. Oh, one I forgot to use is actually the custom width. So let's do that. Um, for example, we could say alpha six for 10 second cast, I'm gonna put, um, so for example, nothing in there, and my custom width is gonna be maybe like 800. And now we're back in the game, so one, two, three, four, five, and then finally six. It's a much longer wait with a much longer cast bar. And that's pretty much it, so that's how this component works. Um, as you can see here, the only one you need to edit is the fireball caster, of course, name it whatever you'd like, and, um, and have fun with this. When you're done casting a spell, your logic could be directly in these one of these three. And, um, and yeah, <laughs> so that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thank you so much for watching again. Um, if you'd like to use this, please just help me out with a subscribe or a like on the video. I'd appreciate both, actually. <laughs> Subscribing is free, and it's going to let you know when I post something free like that again. Also, if you'd like me to um, make this better, to upgrade this cast bar, make it even better, Please let me know if you have any suggestion on how to do that in the comment section below. And I think that pretty much wraps it up today, guys. So thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you next week.